May the Lord bless all of you, and uh, I wish all of you a good welcome again. And so, we, for, we have decided that we we'll have this meeting on buses and one first of all to France. And after after this, there are others who are going to come. After that, there are also other preachers who are on the way who has to come. As I was just saying to you now, and you have to forgive us because we have had a small problem this morning. Uh, it has to st we had to start on 10 a.m. There was a pastor who had to come today at 6 p.m. At 6 a.m. Sorry, and the driver went to look for him. They looked for him and looked for him. Right up to this hour, they have not found him. And so we have some late some late comments, and may the Lord help us so that we can really move forward, so that we can get we can we can buy off the time. And so after that, we have something to eat behind there. Uh, uh, so that we have the conference with those who are going to come. May Lord God bless you richly. And it's only this afternoon that the uh, this afternoon I'm going to do this every one of you because you have the occasion also to speak to the congregation. And today and also tomorrow, we have also a possibility to hear the word of God and and also tomorrow Sunday. And also, uh, and also the for sharp, for sharp periods for all those who have to introduce themselves. I think about uh, Pastor Job Abel Pimbi. You can see how the 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 Lord we let this. Every one of you have a lot of time. This morning, I want to have you again by His grace to also uh, share with you what the Lord had put in my heart to for you. And and first of all, work of God, we are going to stand and pray to thank the Lord for this. Precious blessed Lord, we want to thank you for this grace again that you've given us to receive our brothers and also into this country, and that we can have this occasion to for this conference, or which already from Thursday you are with us, and if they're in Germany. We have blessed us with your word, and today again, and my Lord, and this morning, we have also have also this time also with the yeah, servant so that we can share. the also have the time with the people who are going to come afterwards. We pray that you give us the grace to really have this time, and so that you come again and lead us again, inspire us because it is from you that we want to learn the more. And the only one who can instruct us is you, and we have the of your blessings and your help and really of your powerful hand and amongst us and let your name be blessed and let your name be glorified for we so praise and thank you again for every brother and also who had in the start again to they have also had in the position so that we can hear what we want us to hear today let's be unto you again our so praise in the name of jesus christ amen and so your place is there but i wanted you to be here so that you can be able to see easily the, the, the screen because you have to go and project something and if we have met here because it means the work of God and when we talk about the work of God we talk about the Lord Jesus Christ because he has done what he has done for us and also for the responsibility and the and and the mission the society has given to his the to, to the servants and so we have titled the theme of this conference as being the body of Christ. It's important that we who are the servants of God, that we can really understand and know what the body of Christ is so that we can also at a moment know what we are sensible to do effectively in this body. because. The callings and the ministries that God gives to men is exactly the, for this purpose. That's because in the book of Ephesians, in chapter four, is well said that 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 the Lord had called others as and so as uh, apostles and others as pastors and others as uh, prophets and as doctors, teachers and also evangelists, effectively 
for the edification of the body of Christ. So we must really see that the ministry that we have and not our minist ministries bear the gifts that God has given for a purpose. And sometimes we, conf we confuse the tax that we have and, and we are saying that it's our ministry, it's my calling. No, the calling is of God uh, for a word specified tax. And so we must first of all stand for this. And so it does not mean something that I take myself, but something that God gives to me. Why has God given me this tax and what must I do with it? And so for, for popularity, for money, no, there's a responsibility. It means to work uh, and for the body of Christ, not for my own body, but for the body of Christ. And now we must know what is this gift that the body of Christ has. And so in, in the book of Matthew, in chapter Matthew chapter 16, I want to read it with you. In Matthew chapter 16, there inside, in Matthew chapter 16, Matthew chapter 16, and there also the Lord, Jesus Christ, who, uh, would arrive now in the territory of Caesarea and Phil in, in chapter 16, and ask a question to his disciples, so that he can, they can tell him who was, who, who was, because who am I then? And uh, what the men say that I, the son of man, am. I see in answer that some all say that you are John the Baptist and some Jeremiah are uh, one of the prophets. And you, and you, who do you say that I am? And Simon answered that you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And that verse 16, in verse 17, and Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon, bar Jonah, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock, it means that upon this revelation, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And so, we can see clearly that the Lord, Jesus Christ, here answers to Peter in saying to him that, I, Jesus Christ, the Lord, as you have just received the revelation, I will build my church. And so it's not going to be Peter who is going to build the church. It's not going to be John who is going to build the, uh, the, the, the church or someone else. But the Lord said here that it's I myself, the Lord, I will build my church. And so I will be the proprietor and I'll build myself, my church, my own church. And so now we can see also effectively that this church is the church that was a proprietor, entire proprietor, 100% of the Lord himself and is uh, is a builder and is the one who does everything and so he's himself who brought it and then in the book I think of uh, Ephesians I think so and uh, the book of Ephesians we're going to say with you what Apostle Paul said clearly in making us to know the grace that God has given to him as being the minister of the gospel called because every one of us knows effectively the call and the ministry of apostle paul and so in and so in colossians in chapter one sorry this man of god speak colossians chapter one verse 24 colossians chapter one verse 24 who now rejoice in my sufferings for you and fill up that which is behind the afflictions of christ in my flesh for his body's sake which is the church as Colossians chapter 1 verse 24 and so he said whereof I am made a minister according to the disposition of God which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God so it shows us to us it shows to us that now now that the church that we have heard spoken about in Matthew chapter 16 that who, who, who learned that the builder is Jesus Christ himself and so it is, is he, is that which is the body of Christ. And is this also that, he says here that, so that we can also understand it, saying that in verse 25, in verse 25, it is it's for this body of Christ and for this church, that it's for this church, that body of Christ, that I was made a minister. So God has made me minister, not for myself, but for the body of Christ, that is his church. It means that I'll build my uh, church. And so, 
in their own standard the the, the, the the tax is the answer if you can take also in the book of Ephesians Ephesians in chapter 4 they will also understand now the importance of the ministry and, and the church that God gives us and so to have what serves this ministry in Ephesians in chapter 4 in verse 11 it says to us this and and so we can we start from verse uh, uh, 7 I yes verse 7 it says that but unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ wherefore he said when he ascended up on high he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men and so and now that he ascended what is but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth he that descended is the same also that ascended up, up far above all heavens that he might feel all things and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry for the defying of the body of christ the edification the defying of the body of christ and so the ministry of that the lord gives to us is not for ourselves but is to edify the body of christ so that those who belong to god the people of god can arrive now to be found in that that church not in our own churches but in that church that is really the church that the lord also has engaged us uh, 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 as, uh, uh, as 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 servants so that we enter into that church and so we so that its people also can also arrive again to be inside it and so then so we also understand what it means because the people of god and so in verse 11 it says to us in verse 11 in from verse 12 it says to us that verse 12 for the perfecting of the saints and so the saints are those who are sanctified by the lord jesus christ and they received their lord as a lord and personal savior and so effectively and is the people of god and the sheep that the lord jesus christ has said that my sheep will hear my voice and means that we must understand that the sheep of a church that we are are not our own sheep no it does not belong to us they don't belong to us this sheep belongs to the one who has given us the responsibility and the church so that we can work for what why for his own church and for his own church to which also that he himself had given his life and so he sacrificed himself so that for this church and because it goes fine saying that that he himself had given his life so that this church be sanctified and so it be, it be, it be sent irreproachable with a spot and wrinkles and so then we as being the servants of god called of god the tax that we have is to not to work for ourselves but to make enough errors because we make wars and competitions is the biggest of the pastors or biggest of the and so the biggest of the pastors but we don't have to seek to be the biggest and so that to have a chief amongst us but we have need of that but we have been engaged by one chief and this chief is the lord jesus christ and each and every one of us um, is dependent upon him and we're working also not for our own uh, own work but we are working for his own glory and not for our own glory it's something that is very important for us because he himself also has given us the example uh, and when he came upon it said that and so i it does not uh, think it uh, equal to be equal to god but he took the 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 the, the, the the side of a servant and to accomplish what God sent him and so I have to be very careful we will uh, preach us uh, this aspect that they called pride the pretense, the pretense to know that I know more than this one I know more than this one so I'm the big one no and so when we come also to have a pride top like us in our spirit then God can no longer work with us and so and so God is waiting is that we should be hum humble and we feel humble and as instrument in the hands of the lord for which reason as god called us and it's not that we build our own churches no but it's to work in the church that the lord jesus christ himself had built and the one who does the work is the lord jesus christ and we are simply his own uh, workers his laborers and so that and so the question now that is very important to know is this the church 
and also if you are paying attention when I was saying that because I know that the, the preachers you know it but I want to simply to stand in the position for those who are come far they don't have the same knowledge like you and so it must be that you be in that state of spirit that you also want to hear also the more and so look at the look at this and when we read in Matthew chapter 16 I don't know if you are paying attention when the apostle when Peter when Peter and answered to the question that the Lord also asked him, say but when do you say that I am I the son of man? And so you can see that the disciples they don't know how to answer. But who answer to this question? They said that that you are the Christ, the Son of the Living God, Peter said. And so the Lord Jesus Christ answered to him and saying that you are blessed, Simon by Jonah, for it's not the flesh nor blood that revealed this to you that then used the word revealed 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 it means that we talk about we think about revelation it's not the blood and flesh that revealed this to you but my father who is in heaven that revealed to you then after that said that he said that he said this that upon this rock upon that revelation as he said that you just received i will build my church and the church of the lord jesus christ is built upon the revelation it means effectively that the lord is going to reveal himself to his church and if the word must know things a relationship with the word of god is to the church jesus christ and that the word is going to know it and so now this church has the characteristics to that is that that the lord is the one who is the the birth of it is the origin of the birth of it and and it's one whole city again in the whole the revelation that's why we're going to go now into the book of the revelation that that is the book of the revelation i'll go back now to revelation in chapter one and we can read it for revelation chapter one and they'll have to understand this from revelation chapter one and so already from the first verse we see that it is written that the verse from verse one the revelation of jesus christ which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come. And so the things which must shortly come to pass, and he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. And so we can see now that the, the book of the Revelation is a book of Revelation. And so, and so it's a book also that is addressed yeah, because it means also revelation is addressed to the church to the church of the lord jesus christ and so it's a book of symbols and so only those who are part of this church will have the revelation of what the lord has said here in the book of revelation so uh, it started first of, it started first of all by a revelation it said that in matthew chapter 16 that that upon this revelation that you received i will build my church and so the church will receive the revelation and that's why the lord said to the disciples that to you it has been given to know the mystery of the kingdom of heaven and so remark also that there he said that the revelation of jesus christ it means that is the lord now he reveals himself reveals himself again to whom to his own church and this shows that the days to come and so because and so that the church cannot be in darkness uh, or ignorance because we'll see also the churches and so we're going to see the church we'll see the church as being the body because himself a body must always have a head and the head of the body is christ himself and the apostle paul said it clearly and this in the book of colossians in chapter one in Colossians in chapter 1 Colossians in chapter 1 from verse 15 if you have the Bible I want us to read please don't say read read if you know even pastor just read it simply Colossians in chapter 1 in verse 15 it says to us this who is the image of the invisible God the firstborn of every creature the son for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth which is visible and invisible whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers all things were created by him and for him 
and so then he's a creator and so he is above all things and he is before all things and by him all things consist in verse 18 says to us that and he is the head of the body the church and so jesus christ our lord is the head of the church and so then the, the body also is there and the head is him and so this church is the lord jesus christ and it's sensible also to always have the light because the head is christ himself and the revelation is christ himself and so he gives his own church and so that's why we can also see also in the revelation that we can see also the revelation from the beginning that the revelation that now now we can see that the lord jesus christ is addressing himself to his own church and so but now we can see that because he says now to john this man of god in verse 9 now or in first, first revelation chapter 1 in verse 9 he says this verse 9 he said that i john who is also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of jesus christ was in the island that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the spirit on the last day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And the normal verse says that, normal verse says, a version, the normal verse says that I am Alpha and Omega and the first and the last. And what thou seest, write in the book and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia. And so, and so and get up who is uh, and so and so you can so the the, uh, the 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 technicians can send me the the seventh church ages on the board and so in verse 11 it says that and what thou seest write it in the book and send it on to the seven churches which are asia unto ephesus unto shmina and unto patgomos and unto Thyatira, and unto sardis and unto philadelphia and unto laodicea and also waiting while waiting for our brothers to, to to project these images onto us on the on the screen so that we can understand it but you can see now that there and he's standing there first of all also uh, he was presented in this in this form that came towards john so that he can also speak to him because john was really in uh, because and so because one was speaking to him because in verse 12 he says that and i turned to see the voice that spake with me and being turned i saw seven golden candlesticks and in the midst of the seven candlesticks one like unto the son of man clothed with a garment down to the foot and cared about the paths with the golden ghetto. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto the fine brass, as if they burnt in the furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a two a one a sharp to a sword, and his countenance was as the sun shining in his strength. And when I saw him, I felt as his feet as dead, and he laid his right hand upon me saying unto me fear not i am the first and the last i am he that liveth and was dead and behold i am alive forevermore amen and i have the keys of hell and of death amen and so it means here the lord jesus christ himself and so who he also presented himself also with what you can see as the cassex so then he says now to john and uh, i am the alpha and omega what you see write it and send it to write in a book and send it to all to the seven churches. These seven churches are Ephesus and Smyrna in Pegamos and Thyatira and Sardis and Philadelphia and Laodicea. And so we see now that from the screen you can see that is is in we can see also the Smyrna, the, the Ephesus, the Smyrna, the Pegamos and Thyatira uh, Sardis and Philadelphia and Laodicea. So they are they are the names of cities. The name of cities. So the city of Pe Ephesus, the city of Smyrna and Pegamos, the city of Thyatira, Sardis and Philadelphia and city. And so and so the all the cities are found in Asia Minor. And so in Asia Minor, you can see that one can see see also on the send it now to to the seven churches now and the seven churches and if you can look well at the screen we can see now that's a uh, ephesus ephesus mina and pegamos and territory of philadelphia and now there are seven of them and so yet that lord jesus christ said that i'll build my church and one church not so many churches but one church and so he said that they send it now to the seven churches in fact it does not mean look you look in front please look at the screen and so it does not 
it means the seven churches but it means one church that is going to pass through seven different stages and so then if Ephesus and Smyrna they are cities in in that we see in Ephesus we see that the church of believers were in Ephesus the characteristics of the church that was in Ephesus reflected the the the, the age of Ephesus and it uh, uh, has to come and so you can see that the Lord also uh, speak in such a way that we can realize that this church effectively that is our church is going to pass through these stages because certainly we see that so so many of amongst you know it that the the figures also with the Lord because when we talk about three is perfection when we talk four you know seven is is, is our accomplishment five is the grace six is the is the, and so and so and so in the seventh day uh is rested and so we finish all this work and so uh, we can see also up, up to this yeah following the figures and so the only church now in question now is going to the only church is going to pass through seven different stages they will remark now then afterwards that the lord spoke in the scripture that we just read that they were seven golden candy six and so and so he had seven stars in his right hand and a, a, a sharp to a sword from his mouth and so what so and so then we we'll talk about the seven stars it means effectively the seven messengers that are in relationship also with every age of the church it means that every age of the church because if you can just see now that they are seven periods through which the church is going to pass through and before the Lord who had made a promise to his own church it means that that I'm going to prepare a place for you and so when I'll finish then I'll come back when I'll finish then I'll come back to look for you and so then before that the Lord will come back to look for the church then he had to pass through the stages Ephesus right up to Laodicea and so from Laodicea is the last one and then we also remark that when we take in chapter 2 of Revelation from verse 1 we can see that the scripture says that now that unto the angel of the church of Ephesus right and so it means that first of all in age as God had always said it as you also had God also chosen you and so it's true amount to that that God is going to speak to the souls that you are going to see because and uh, speak to them so that they can also believe to and see the things and so in the in, in the church too you also have messengers messengers too it's an age and there are messengers too that god also brought up for which that he gave them the messages and they give the messages for the church uh, for that period that they were found in and uh, that the church is going to go and so then if we go back now in chapter one two we can see that in in verse in verse 19 it says this Revelation chapter 1 verse 19 it says that write the things which thou hast seen and the things which are and the things which shall be thereafter the mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand are the seven golden candlesticks the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches and the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches then <coughs> the one that that the seven candlesticks are the seven churches and the seven stars are then the seven messengers and so i know that most of you among most of you know it very well and what i ask you today just is just to very, just follow and pay attention and so and so these seven stars are in relationship with the seven edges too and so we also see that and we we'll enter now into uh, like chapter like chapter two and so on and so on our chapters in revelation spoke about the way that the the message the, of the first age was given and also remember that 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 there was a man that god used and in an extraordinary way in the holy scripture in the new testament and so all the compared to apostles it means apostle paul this man also as you know him he he was the one also that called the the apostles to the gentiles and so um, when you go to the churches also 
they are not Jewish churches. They are churches that are found in the Gentile nations. And, in, and so uh, Philadelphia, Smyrna, and Pegamos all are in the Gentile countries. And so then we can see that the messenger of Ephesus, uh, uh, Ephesus is Paul, and it's the Paul that the Lord also uh, want to be brief so that we can gain the time. And so then it's Apostle Paul who started, as you know, it's how also the Lord also used him in such a powerful way. And so it's like this that for the following uh, 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 messengers by the grace of the Lord to know how to find themselves effectively in the age and uh, in the age two. And so we had to refer to the ministry of Apostle Paul, the characteristics of this man, the heart, as God, and also how God used him. And so it's also is. It was also his message. He also shared also other to add other messengers, and that's how we see that this one is this one, this one is this one, and so you can see also in the ministry, in the ministry of Paul, God used him, and so how God, God was healing, and was God was delivering his ministry because the gospel that was preached by men is preached to God is also the, the gospel of action, and so the message was given by Paul in this age, in his own age, and he preached. And if you remark also that you also in the Holy Scripture, in every age, the message is given to the messenger. The messenger that gives the sermon or the message, then in the middle now, the Lord, and that it says that the one has an ear, and that's something that is very, very uh, surprising. And so I'm going to read with you just a little bit. Revelation. Revelation chapter 2 from verse 1 unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write These things said he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks and so then he says that he, say, he said the message I have to say that in verse 7 says this now that he that had an ear let him hear what the spirit saith unto the churches and to him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life which is in the midst of the paradise of God and so then we can see us two things. The one has an ear. Let him hear what the Spirit said unto the churches. And so he does say that you pay attention. And the one has an ear. Let him hear what the messenger said. No, 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 no sir. He said the word that hear what the Spirit said unto the churches. Because what we must have is the ears to hear the Spirit that speaks to the man and not what man had to say but that you can hear what the holy spirit has said because the true preacher the marvelous and excellent uh, preacher is not you or not me is the holy ghost and so because the lord said that i will send to you the comforter the spirit of the truth and he's going to instruct you and then we are called of god we must first of all be filled by the holy ghost so that the lord now can use us now and if the Lord uh, fill us with the Holy Ghost, then there will never be jealousies amongst the preachers. There will never be war against uh, amongst the preachers because it's just like a, it's not my work. It's not my own work. It's the work of the of the boss. It's not me who is working, but it's him working in me. And so they send, they send him working in my brother. So all what you have to do is unity and res mutual respect in the work of God. And so then at that moment, then there will be harmony in the work. And so that is what we see now. As he said that, then he said this. Not only the one who has a ear says what the spirit said touches, but said that to the one overcome it. And so, in every age now, there are things that we that we come against because there will be war. And so, if you and it, they know, if one read in Matthew chapter sixteen, the Lord says, the Lord, says, the Lord Jesus Christ said to Peter that upon this revelation I will build my church, and he added that the gates of hell cannot prevail against it. It means that all hell will always fight against the church of a living God. And so the church must know how to keep the victory. Uh, it's like this that you also remark that in the chapter 4 of Revelation. And so we we'll jump up down to, to the time in chapter 4 of Revelation. And this man of God, John, in verse 1, he says this After this, I looked. And behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first, the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me. And so, 
And so if, uh, please, uh, the, for prepare now the, the, the. So then after this, I looked and behold, a door was open, and the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet, which said unto me, Come, Abdita, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. <coughs> and he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone, and there was a rainbow round about the throne inside like unto an emerald. And around about the throne were four and twenty seats. And upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices, and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. And before the throne there was a sea of glass like the unto crystal and in the midst of the throne and around about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind and the first beast was like a lion the second beast like a calf and the third beast had a face as a man and the fourth beast was like a fly eagle fly eagle and the four beasts and each of them six wings about him and they were full of eyes within and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. And so then, we can also see that, that there also they describe to us that the things that are special, and so that John was transported into, onto, up into heaven. And so what did he see? Then he saw a throne. And around the throne now, that he saw, then, and so, and upon, and so, they were crowned upon the head so you can see where that there we have the, the, uh, we have to deal now with men that have been crowned and so you can see the 24 be the 24 elders there were 12 12 the 12 are the 12 patriarch and the 12 others are the 12 apostles and uh, because the lord and uh, we don't have a lot of time for this the lord has said it and so that's that's why there are 24 of them but now look at one thing they say that that around this throne there were lightnings and thunderings and and before the throne were burning the, the light that was the seven spirit of god now there's only one spirit one god one spirit and one baptism and one and so uh, one faith and so they talk about the holy spirit they don't say that god has seven spirits but it's just to express your messengers and so then the diagrams also had the four living beast please <laughs> it just to express as to that effectively the spirit of god this holy spirit of god was in the seven messengers for the seven church ages as we are seeing also in Paul and say Martin Luther and right up to the seven churches as so we can see that the day of the Pentecost the tongue of fire descended upon the heads of the believers and so in the Old Testament God was walking in in the as in the form of pillar of fire the New Testament then this shared, this fire was shared to dwell upon the heads of every believer and so then we can see also that that they uh, for living beast who are uh, then now the who are in front of the throne and as they have the same spirit in the seven uh, church messengers and so they say that in the midst of the throne and in the middle of the throne there are four and uh, twenty elders sitting and so the first living beast and so there were four beasts also and the first one is like a lion and the second one the second beast like a calf and the second one is like a calf, as I see it, and the, and the third beast had the face of a man. And the fourth beast was like a, a flying eagle. And also remark also effectively that. And so in front of this throne, and so it was no longer the throne of Christ as you can see it. And so because it's one of his blood. Now we can see that it's a throne of grace. But when the blood has been taken away, then it becomes a throne of judgment. In chapter 4, as you can get it, John said that he was transported. It means that he was raptured. And so John is a type of the church. And so he was raptured. And so he was he was he, he was taken up. The four living beasts that is described here, the lion. And so, the face of a man, the face of an ego. And so, I have a special experience with the Lord. I will Bible in my hand. I was in Miami, uh, in Miami, and there I preached 
then I entered in the, my hotel room and I was then I was laying down you know I was laying down like that in the bed and so I left my Bible just beside me and said so Myanmar is between Thailand and China and so they have Laos or something like that then after Vietnam or something like that so so yeah, after the sermon then I, I, I went to the hotel room then the presence of the Lord came upon me right there in the hotel room they said to me arise and take the the word and I got up I took now the Bible then and while we go now into the book of Revelation then made me also to read also in chapter 4 and so they came now to the four living beasts the, the four living beasts what are they or who are there to you then what I tell you what I'm serving is my witness I said that Lord what I see is that the four living beasts this one is a relationship with this one I took now you know this and that I confused, I confused everything I mixed up everything I placed things in disorder they said to me no 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 what you're doing is not conforming and the one who says to me that this one is a relationship this one and this one with this one and this one with this one and this one with this one I was there I was touched to see that how the Lord was watching that the things be placed in their right places I want to tell you God is my witness 100 percent and so it says that this is in relationship with this you know the prophet of this age and so and so then I looked at I said my Lord let them be blessed and so it's like this also that I explained say that that because I, prof I profited his presence was there I took advantage because this presence was there I said to, I said to him that God because now I have the grace now to have you now in here you now I want to ask you one thing but sometimes I go different places I don't know I don't feel that you are not there because I uh, okay man I want to feel that his God is there because it's also uh, sad you know that uh, you are not there and so he said to, he answered me as saying that I've always been there I've always been there and uh, I saw my blessed Lord have pity upon me and after since from that then I said that Lord it's us we are going to see uh, quest ask questions and so there are moments then he placed the things in a relationship with the four gospels and so then and so lion is in a relationship with the book of Matthew so if you read also in the book of gospel he spoke about the wise men who came saying that where is the king of the Jews and so who are just born and Matthew in chapter 2 I think so we don't have much time for it but that's that where is the the king of Jews when you start on genealogy the son Jesus Christ son of David so is the the kingdom that has started now and sent to Lord Jesus Christ a lot then <clears throat> we're going to talking about the calf and so is 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 and so and so it's a book gospel according to mark so show us jesus christ the lord not talking about his genealogy but talking directly about the action of this laws and let's go to the book of mark because the calf represents the gospel according to mark let's go now to the book uh, the gospel according to mark mark let's go read the book of mark mark chapter Mark chapter, Mark chapter 3 verse 9 Ooh, from, from verse 12 from verse 12 Mark chapter 3 verse 12 and he strictly charged them that they should not that they should not make him known and he invest for as he healed in verse 10 for he healed many is so much that they pressed upon him for to touch him as many as had plagues and so he carried our sicknesses and so he carried our sicknesses and so they, they, so the the unclean spirits when they saw him fell down before him and cried that thou art the son of god and he strictly charged them that they should not make him known and so he carried our sicknesses our plagues our carried our burdens and so now the 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 third the third living beast that has the face of a man is in relationship with the gospel of Luke because we we'll go to Luke we see that it speaks about a man 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 Jesus Christ man Jesus Christ look at it in Luke in Luke chapter 2 I think so we can go to the book of Luke in chapter 2 Luke in chapter 2 Luke chapter 2 look at it very well and you we'll see here that in verse 39 it says this Luke chapter 2 verse 39 
and when they had performed all things according to the law of the Lord, they returned into Galilee to their own city, Nazareth, and, uh, full stop. And the child grew and was strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. And so we talk about the man, a child, and so the every child too, uh, a human being, he is growing up and growing up, you know, and so he was born and he's growing up. And so it's in the Gospel of Luke that we will see that and he showed us Jesus Christ as a man and how he could also do this and that and so different places and so uh, you see his humanity. But now, an eagle. And now the eagle represents the Gospel of John. And we'll go now to the book of John. And so we see that this man already brings us in the height. And he talked about, he said that in the beginning was the word. It was no longer the earthly things now, but the word now is talking about spiritual things now. And so now the four living beasts now, he has the face of an eagle that fly it. It's in relationship with the gospel of, uh, uh, gospel of John. And so you can realize that, he says that to us that, that these four living beasts were around the throne. It means that they were positioned uh, in the four cardinal points. And so it's Esnar, brothers and sisters, that you can know. And so you have much time after this. But if we go now to the Old Testament, when the Lord asked Moses to build the tabernacle, in reality, he also commanded him that, that the tribes of Israel can encamp around the tabernacle. And so they had 12 tribes. And so these 12 tribes, they were encamped around the tabernacle. Because if they are 12, it means that, it means that, uh, 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 the 12 uh, divided by 3 is 4 uh, 4 times 3 is uh, uh, is 12 so the tabernacle was like that in the middle and so there were 3 tribes here and 2 tribes there and 3 tribes there and 3 tribes there and so everyone had a banner and so that represented whom he was in the tribe of Judah and so it was, it was the lion you know you're not so and the lion of the lion of the tribe of Judah and so every banner had to had the position that is going to be because they were encamped around the tabernacle where the holy the most high was there and so then then we will see that that is really is important how god positioned the things in the holy scripture and so i want you now to go now in the seven church ages the four living beasts the four living beasts had a relationship direct with the seven church ages the people of God, because we have heard also what the Lord said, that the one has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is said to the churches. And secondly, to the one overcome it, it means that effectively the, the, the hell and death is going to fight against it. And the church is going to fight against the church. And so it must be that the church has a necessary weapon again to overcome. And so it must be that the church uh, know who the enemy is. And that's why I said, never make this error. Who are preaching the word of God? You will have people who are going to criticize you, the brothers and sisters, who are going to insult you and will say evil things against you. Never, never take these brothers and sisters being against as uh, being against you as your enemies. Because if you consider you as an enemy, then you have lost. You have lost the battle. Because the true enemy that you have is not your brother or sister. Even if he he does not believe in me, even this he hates me, he's, he's never going to be my enemy. But the only enemy that you have is the devil. And so only enemy that you have. And so and so we must know what we are and who is our adversary. And so if we take now into Revelation chapter six. Let's go into Revelation chapter six. Verse six, you see rapidly. And the scripture makes us to know this. And there is a moment the Lord our Savior now because in the chapter 5 of Revelation it speaks to us about I want to read rapidly in verse 1 it says that verse, uh, chapter 1 uh, chapter 5 of Revelation verse 1 chapter 5 verse 1 and I saw in the right hand of the him that sat on the throne a book Written within and on the backside, seed with services, and I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to lose the seeds thereof? Now, that's a book seed with several seals. And no man in heaven, nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereof. And I wept much because no man 
was sound worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. And there also now then, and the question now was asked, so that we can find now who was worthy to take this book now that was sealed with several seals and also breaking the seals there was no one and so this book in fact is the book of redemption is the book of redemption it, that is and so the title of proprietorship was adam before when god also placed him upon the earth as being the the, the chief and the boss because god said let us not make man according to our mish let him dominate so adam, adam, adam dominated Ab, 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 upon all things he was a proprietor he was god upon the earth and so amate god upon the earth and so he was his proprietor and so the proprietor of the property of his father was his, prof, was his property so he was a proprietor and so when the fall took place then satan now took hold now of the control took hold of the, uh, the control of the title so and so then the title of proprietorship go back to god himself who is god who created heaven and earth uh, who was all his property that's how the fall, the fall took place and this came and so then we needed now a kinsman redeemer who is going to bring us back in the position that adam had at the garden of eden that is why we have need not of a second adam but a last adam jesus christ our lord who is the last adam and so he had to go now through these experiences to now that's why the bible says that that's why we see that so many so many so many make mistakes in saying that that there's through the extremity that they are god the father god the son god the holy spirit no there's only one god and this god now this is what happens that this is god in question for to save us he it must be that he become man he becomes he became man to redeem man it must not be that it be an angel or a spirit because man is not a spirit man must be somebody who has the same nature as man so that he can redeem man and to bring back man in the position in the original position that he was before so the human the, the human body also was corrupted and so and the your blood also cannot save you because i myself have salvation it must be someone who does not have a corrupted blood and so the, the holy scriptures said to us that, that that behold the virgin will conceive it means that the word of god <clears throat> and without 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 it being mixed up and so the word of god is saying so that i see it and that's what then the seed of a woman is going to crush the hell of serpent you know this is not so but the woman doesn't have a seed and so look and look for the woman can never have a seed the bible says that in Genesis 3 15 the seed of the woman and so I put enmity between you, your seed, and the seed of the serpent. And so, and so, I talk about a woman who has a seed. It means that God knew Mary even before a long time ago. And so now, when the time came, the angel Gabriel came towards Mary, because the Bible says that the Lord will give Himself will give a sign. Behold, a virgin will conceive, and you will give forth a son, and I will call it admirable counselor, Almighty God prince of peace and so when mary uh, got the word you know the following also and and so the the form was given so that the one who had to come must be a man to redeem us and so that's why john cried here yeah? because there was no one in heaven the angel cannot save us because it must be a human being a man a man not conceived in the way we are conceived because you know adam did not have a father or a mother and so and adam did not have umbilical cord you know it's not so and so it must be that someone who came like adam was a silent can satan couldn't understand this that's how the, it was given to mary and mary took the words without yeah the, the assistance of a human being he brought for the son she brought the first son then uh, then just started weeping they heard a voice he said that then one of the elders said to me that one of the elders said to me that we not behold behold what behold the uh, the behold the lion of the tribe of judah the root of the david i prefer to open the, the book and to lose the seven seas thereof then they turned and all the whole earth rejoiced because the one who can take the book and 
and take us from slavery now which is terminated <clears throat> now you see that he took the book then he started opening up this book was now was the as a title of, that's the book is the title of brothership and so that was can see that in verse 8 now we say that so look, <clears throat> John chapter 5 verse 8 and uh, Revelation chapter 5 verse 8 now and say that and when he had taken the book the four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down before the lamb having every one of them house and gold and fairs full of others which are the prayers of the saints and they sung in his song saying that I wanted to take the book and to open the seas thereof for thou hast was slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and thong and people and nation and has made us unto our God kings and priests and we shall reign on the earth and so now and so then the, you got our redemption and so this book with the seven seas was important because there was a seven there was a mystery mistress in it as in chapter six now we can see that in chapter six and i look and i saw when the lamp opened one of the seals and i heard as it be, be, be attentive i heard as it were the noise of thunder one of the four beasts saying come and see and now the four beasts now enter into action and so when they took the, the seal they opened up the seal and the four beasts enter in action and these four living beasts they are not they are special and so they have eyes in from within and without and so and so it has a lot these eyes have significance but we don't have much time to go into it but now look at this one of the four living beasts come now said because the four living beasts they are relationship with the, the church as i've just shown it to you before and so with the ages of church they are also in a relationship with the church and so because you can also see now that why the enemy also that the lord said that we was an ear let him hear what the spirit said unto the churches and what the church spirits the second thing to the one overcome it and so there will be battle and satan is going to come up the purpose of satan is to destroy the people and not to allow them to leave the word of god it must be that they be as he is as he wants that has been his, his purpose ever from from beginning to corrupt the word of god and so what do we see now and so we see that in verse 9 and so in verse 9 it says that and when he had opened the book and i saw and the white horse and so and a, a crown was given to him and he went to 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 conquer uh, he went for conquering and to conquer that's verse 2 sorry and so and say so white horse in verse 2 and i saw behold the white horse he and so and so when you see the black he says you know we see the white he said that's innocent and says it's, it's good it's innocent they see a man now and to climb upon the horse but he this man had he had a bow and a crown was given unto him and he went forth conquering and to conquer and so he went to conquer conquering and to conquer and so his purpose was to go and conquer to conquer whom and it's a question ask ourselves we we'll see and so you understand what it is then you see white horse it's white horse it means that it's just the years past the sermons who the preachers who preach upon it he said that is the Holy Spirit that has gone to to say no that everyone gave his own interpretation. No man seek also to get the answer, but but the Lord Jesus Christ has said, upon this revelation, I will build my church. And you still remember also, and so it must be that the church also can have the revelation. It means that that what is happening, and if we go back now in the age of Ephesus, in chapter two now. Ephesus in chapter 2 and so the book of Revelation in Ephesus in chapter 2 of Revelation so it said that I know your work and your perseverance and how also you you have suffered and because of my name you have tried those who say the apostles are, are not and so uh, we can also go to Ephesians so chapter 2 and 3 so but remark one thing here it says look at it but you have this I like, have somewhat against you because um, Revelation chapter 2 in verse uh, verse 3 says this Revelation chapter 2 verse 3 
and has had bone and has patience and for my name's sake has labored and was not fainted. The seven the seven says this that he had and that you have that this that the six that this thou has that latest the deeds of the Colossians, which I also hate. We see that in the age of Ephesus, there were a lot of light there. And so I see that the light is that's where the gospel was so powerful with a lot of light. But now this small black layer that you're seeing there under is what started uh, entering into the, the, the church that they call they call they call it the work of the, the Colossians. It's when a man get up. So what is it? It's when a man get up and say that I am I am this, I am that and they started adding his own his look start looking for his own glory because he, he knows that the men don't want that the Holy Spirit continue to act and have dominion in, in, the, in the church. Men want to take control themselves and they want to control and do their own business too and so and so in the churches businessmen means that the businessmen of the church not those who are working no but no they do their business in the church their own business in the church and so and they bring down and carry what is not of God inside and so ever since the age of Ephesus you see we go that also now to chapter 2 of Revelation from the age of Ephesus we go now we go now to the age of Smyrna now we see it in the age of Smyrna and verse 8 it says that unto the church verse 8 uh, unto the church of uh, unto the angel of the church in Esmina right this thing said the first and the last which was the third and is alive I know that works and tribulation and poverty and so but and so it says that and to the church of the anti programmers and so the one who has this double assault and I know that I know that I know that is and the Satan and now continue in verse 15 it says this so as thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans which was which thing I hate as Ephesus it was the works they continued now down no, to Smyrna and now became now stronger now in 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 Pegamos now it becomes a doctrine it became a doctrine and so on <coughs> It's coming why because so that so that the truth is this that the people of God can now arrive down to overcome because so to overcome it and so it must be it must pay attention not to man because the people want to look on to man no but no but it's the word that God gives that is found also the strength and power so that you can understand how to overcome and so they won't listen to the word of God they must listen well what the spirit said unto the churches and so God now must give to the people effectively their power their power and age so that they can overcome now this this force this satanic force that is coming and so that effectively there is the face of a lion or enters into action because the lion is what is the original word and so as to maintain the original word and it's like this also that that the the good in the book of uh, it talk about the gospel of matthew one of the uh, living beasts came into action and now the age that's the period of uh, uh, Ephes, ephesus spin and pegamos and so come now to the age of tatira which we found the calf that comes to action because that's the age where of the matthias the age of the matthias is in, the, uh, in this age that the catholic church and and set, set people and uh, and uh, well, it's eight million people and so that's how they were cut off people in the middle and so um they, they needed what the spirit of of the, the face of a calf to support the, to accept to die as being a matia matia and so and without this without this without this they would have run, run away and so so they could support support that that uh, to, to 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 die for the cause of the gospel so the lord in every age was given the work of the word of god the, uh, and give them power necessary powers for which reason is he doing this or well, we saw this and so this horseman 
with white horse what is uh, uh, strange is that we we'll go now to different stages so we we'll see that the, the horse change colors and so and so look at it and this horseman does not have a name look at it very well in verse 2 in chapter 6 verse 2 and i saw and behold a white horse and he that sat on him had a bow and a crown was given unto him and he went forth to conquer and to conquer and we'll go now if we'll go now to verse 4 and there went out another horse that was red and, and that was red and power was given to him that sat on and so once it is it's red you know a mix of blood and that's the age of that theatre and so we see it and changes colors and so a relationship with this and so this horse changes colors and thou climbs upon him and so look at it but sisters, it's in the fourth seal in verse 8 it says that and i looked and behold a pale horse and his name that sat on him was dead dead and hell, full, and hell followed with him you understand now and so the lord i said it that i'll build my church and and hell cannot prevail against it and so ever since from chapter 6 from verse 2 is the antichrist that we are seeing there and so it's fighting also the word of god in the church and so the church must not must have the necessary element and so now when the antichrist changes the color now then it must now be that to go down to another face so that we can recognize him and so you see that and the calf and the calf you have to be like tough so that we can be like this so that we overcome and if you don't have the characteristics of a calf in the age of that era will never be able to overcome because it must be that be the face of the calf and support and so you can support easily the tribulations and without that you cannot support so Satan passed through that that means because and if we take now chapter 19 of Revelation chapter 19 from verse 11 Revelation chapter 19 verse 11 I saw heaven opened and behold a white horse and so it's just in chapter 6 and now it says that it's also a white horse but it says unto us that and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true and in righteousness he doth judge and make war his eyes were as the flame of fire and on his head were many crowns and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself and so he was clothed with a vesture deep in blood and his name is called the word of god and so jesus christ will see it now there but now we're saying that yes the antichrist is going to change now the colors and god also intervenes and so what we see in the age of salis and uh, philadelphia they give us in the face of a man why and so remember also that that then so we see that the luther and john wesley and so when the church had to go up you know so you see it and that's what is written here so that you can get it the, the chapter i'm going to read with you uh, revelation chapter 6 is 5 revelation chapter 6 is 5 and when he had opened the third seal i heard the third beast say come and see and i beheld and lo a black horse and he that sat on him had a pair of balances in the sand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts saying, A measure of weight for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny. And see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. And so, and I talk about the face that men started selling things, you know, selling, selling, and pay for this and buy for that, and so on and so on. And so, and the intelligence of man entered, then, then also used now the face of a man with then i say that in time is action that's it man man is justified by faith not by works that's how there was an expression and so they talked about they talk about and so then ever since from now They were sold now John Wesley now in this age and we had to follow afterwards after Luther and then we we'll enter into action and so they will consider that the face of man who is fighting also the thought of uh, 
in the churches, as you can see it. And so, we go now to loud say, huh? then we see now. But I want you to pay attention to this. And you are following here. Yeah? Don't follow someone else, but you follow here. Yeah? And here is now the. It gives now the, the statistics in report with the three stages. And so now, look at this. <coughs> we don't have much time, but we can see now also that the age of Salis, there is Martin Luther with the Philadelphia and with John Wesley in the Church of Philadelphia. But if you can also see that, as all the uh, pictures they know it, there are three stages, three stages that for a believer. And so, uh, so that they can also be led by the Holy Spirit. It means that their justification is when you believe the Lord Jesus Christ, then you receive him as a personal Savior and Lord. And then we go on through sanctification. That is the work of the Holy Ghost. And so, and so, the, all this, the preachers here, they know that when we talk about the, the that, that we we'll talk about the church, we we'll talk about not upon justification, sanctification, and then the baptism of the Holy Spirit was teach the people of God. And I ask your attention, please. I ask your attention, please. For you will know it, please. Attention. And we know also that always that the justification is with Martin Luther. This you know it were sanctification with John Wesley. And so we we'll preach on this. All of us who we'll preach yes sanctification. Uh, 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 justification Luther, sanctification John Wesley, and that's true. But now, when come now to the baptism of the Holy Spirit, they will go say that justification Luther, sanctification John Wesley, and afterwards baptism of the Holy Spirit we will stop there. Now, I ask myself question now, and it's not normal, my brothers and sisters, that we we'll talk about justification. Uh, God used a man in the name of Martin Luther, and they will go now to sanctification. Who was the man who was used? John Wesley. And they come now to the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The sermon, they said, preachers become uh, dumb. And so it's true. They become dumb. And so we'll talk about him. The justification, Luther, sanctification, John Wesley, and, and coming back to the Holy Spirit, glory be to God. But there's a question mark there. And so we have the seven uh, messengers now. And so, but now we we'll ask ourselves questions now to know. And so the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And so, if you remark it very well, that the age of uh, Sardis started in in 1720 and finished in 1760 with the Martin Luther as a messenger, and now uh, 1950, uh, 1850 to 1806 with John Wesley as a messenger. Then now we go now to age of Laodicea. That started now in 1906 and continued, and then. We say that that is justification is Luther, sanctification is John Wesley, and that is the Holy Spirit, uh, mark, and that's where the problem starts. Yes, my brothers and sisters, I'm just just reading the Bible. This you have to know. Then the Lord let me hear. I, I think that I preached this in the in the church. I think so some months, so two months now. I was not reading the Bible. Then you see that the Lord now let me to read a scripture. Then afterwards, then I continued and continue and continue. Justification and uh, sanctification, then may make me to stop. I say, listen, please, listen, please. I stand in front of God, the Bible in my hand. It say that you have justification. You have Lut Martin Luther, yes. Sanctification. You have your uh, John Wesley, yes. And now the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Why don't why, why do you want to jump? Why do you want to jump? Because it must be that. And so there are three stages that the church must go through. And so justification, sanctification. And then the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you give. And so you know that in the age of Laodicea, God used a man, the, the messenger, in the name of William Maran Branham. And so within the, the stars, William Branham is one of the stars in the Laodicea. But William Branham, my brothers and sisters, did not come with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The ministry of William Branham started is the ministry of the restoration to bring the people to the faith of the faith of the fathers to, the, to bring them back to the world never his ministry was made by the baptism or the the the, the, the giver of the holy spirit but william Abraham was also born in 1909 and so 
the age of Laodicea started in 1906. 1906. And so, what happened now then? Why we we'll put that question mark? That's the same question mark. That's what we see also that is a problem with men, but not to God. Not to God. No, no, sir. No, no, no. And so, then in 1906, God opened up my eyes, my brothers and sisters. Then the the, the, the impartation of the Holy Ghost took place in the Susa Street. That's where we we'll see that the restoration of gift took place and was the man that god used in that time and is is a follow step now and this is absolutely important my brothers and sisters and we who are preachers and every time we we'll say the justification sanctification baptism of the holy spirit we go into question mark no sir we must take out the question mark because in 1906 the, and there, even the newspaper was titled Pentecost has come. It means that the, the Pentecost has been restored. And so we see that in 1906, God used a man in the name of William Joseph Samuel. And so it's through this man that God now made that, that the power of the Holy Spirit be the port. And when Milo Brown started his ministry, he did not even have the knowledge of baptism of the Holy Ghost. Then he went to the church that the found preachers who were there in the Holy Ghost and preaching. And God said to him, Now go back there to that church. But his mother in law said, No, don't go there. These people they are just like that. And so and so he listened now to the mother in law, and because of that, he lost his wife. His life wife died. And so that's why he so baptism of the Holy Spirit at God has brought the Holy Spirit to the ministry of William Samuel. And so and so when we we'll come to that point, we we'll, we'll pass through. But God has made a work. It's through the ministry of this man that the Holy Ghost took a special dimension through in the whole in the whole world right up to today. But look at one thing that's very important. And so let's go to the next uh, to the next uh, page. And that's where people can see that the prophet is that my brothers and sisters, God does not mix up things. God does not miss up things. God places things in his right places. And we also, we must allow the Holy Ghost to place things so that the people of God be instructed in a good way. Because if we say that Martin Luther and John Wesley and also must also speak about William Seymour, the man to whom also that God in this a time now, because in the age of Lord, say started in 1906, as in 1906 now, right? Come, my brother, it's 1906. Effectively, that the Holy Ghost now the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost descended effectively in Asusa Street. Uh, Asusa, Asusa Street, that everyone also had really had the so now, now Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, to and forever. Now, look at one thing. We'll go back into the ark, and so I think that. Uh, the, the question mark who know it in the age of Laodicea William Abraham also now in a sermon also he says he says this that we have the justification with uh, Luther sanctification with John Wesley and then afterwards he passes through he said baptism of the Holy Spirit then he said now comes now the word of God and so it must be that we be clear and so there was the age of law, the sanctification, John Wesley, uh, will have some move now for for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And now comes now the ministry of the Word of God. It means that the restoration that is the ministry of William Abraham. William Abraham did not come with the baptism of the Holy Spirit, no, but he found already the pour, outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Why? Why? Why this? Because God is perfect in the age of Laodicea. For we were preachers, and so you have to pay attention to this. Then there is the double action of God in this age. Because look at the brothers and sisters. Look at this shape, please. Yeah, we see that that is that that is with Abraham. And so it's a, if of this age. We have what? The message. And we'll look at the message. The message is what? The message shows also so the return to the original faith. It's not true. The return to the primitive church. And so what happened now in the primitive church? In the primitive church, the Lord thought He said that I had not taught them to wait. 
And so the brothers and sisters, don't be disturbed. And it's important what you're hearing. Because I'll speak to you and say no, but I cannot lift up someone, but I want you to understand this. And so we'll preach to there are things that must leave beside, but God wants us to bring it up. And so it's God who chooses men, it's not me. God chose him. And why should I be looking at him? It's no problem. It's no problem. But here, William Abraham is the messenger with the words, my brother, the words without the baptism of the Holy Spirit, it does not move. Yes. And so a word without the spirit is nothing, value nothing. And so in the age of Alice, and so the messenger, there was a power of the spirit and the message. And so one preached also in our churches, sir, we have to mention the two. And so the words and the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and that what the Lord wants is the action of God in the age that we are now. Yes, sir. And so we must understand this. And we don't preach the word in half. It is true, my brothers and sisters. And this, we are parents. We just repeat this, and there's no life. We put the Pentecost beside. But we must come back to the Pentecost. It must be the Pentecost in our churches too because God took the word to bring us back to the original church and so what was it the baptism of the Holy Spirit and what was it the the, the acts there today are only quotations and there's no life why because the gift and the instrument standard we must have power yes we have it of the word and the power of in the world and God demonstrated that as it was a final age the restoration of gifts the baptism and that's where it's in this age is the final age the age that we are called to preach the gospel and not like uh, the denominational churches no but the gospel of the truth with the spirit of god and the power and so in our own churches and so not only the return to the word but also to the end of pentecost where god is in action in our own churches and so it must be that the baptism of the holy ghost be in action Otherwise, brothers and sisters, we are doing a work that is denominational and there's nothing in it because there we are collaborating with the Antichrist. It's sure certain because, you know, because the seal of God and there is the mark of a beast. If you don't have the seal of God, you have the mark of a beast. It must be that people understand that the word is there. And so, and so when we have the two words, then the power also follows it. Yes, William Abraham preached upon it, but the pastor above it is sure. But we have need of the Pentecost, we have need of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And God has restored it. And so that's why when William Abraham attended the sin, he said extraordinary things. And the justification, sanctification, and baptism of the Holy Spirit, God placed it, not so? And so, do you know it, brothers? William Samuel preached exactly the same thing as William Abraham. I have the sermons. He preached justification just as William Abraham preached it. It means that the Holy Ghost with the words and Abraham comes said that yes to confirm that this is a messenger. Then he confirmed it as being a messenger. He confirmed the message. In our own churches, my brothers and sisters, we must be precise and showing the people what God has done and also also the the, 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 the action. It's not the age of Philadelphia, no sir. It's in our own age, the age of loud sayer. And so when we talk about messenger, we also talk about the action to the relationship with the baptism of the Holy Spirit for our own churches. Otherwise, brothers, we will be also learning the letters. But it must be that we say that by this word, God showed us that, that we must have the word and also have the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The two, the two, the two, the two for the church, not for everyone, but for the church, for to a church who have the truth, we have the true baptism of the Holy Ghost. And so, and this upon the earth, most church must have this. Why my brothers and sisters? Because as you know it, it spoke about the, the bride of the church and the bride. Uh, the, 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 the white group of the of the church is the Christ. How do you enter the body of Christ? In believing the message of William Abraham, no sir. No sir. The bapt through the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And so when we are baptized of the Holy Ghost, they will enter into the body now of Christ. And so why well, the messenger? No? Because the message was not sent to the churches, but it was sent for the bride. And so now and without the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and so 
you can repeat like a parrot. But when you have the baptism of the Holy Spirit, then exactly I know how God sent it to us because the word of God is, to, is, is it that God is going to do all things because it transforms and it brings us into this perfect status. So, beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, our brothers, you know, because it means preachers now. And so, and so our brothers, you know. That's important, my brothers and sisters, my brothers, that you get it. It's absolutely important that we change our ways of seeing things and also pay attention and see that God is acting. Knowing to know that the action of God, change the people of God, the action of God, because we say some sometimes we talk about justification, sanctification, baptism, the Holy Spirit. When we say justification with Luther and sanctification with, Martin, uh, with John Wesley, then baptism, the Holy Spirit, then it's William Semul. And the message came now to William Baham. And so then we must be precise and clear, especially my brothers and sisters, and bring the people of God not to what we that the, the eyes be fixed upon us but the eyes be fixed upon the action of god and demonstrating that this is jesus christ paid and so for his church and so we'll talk about Baron and this and that but we must be able to speak about him as being the one who is walking in the midst of a seven golden card six and now because if if it uses my brother daniel why should i be uh, ashamed that he said that using brother daniel and so no you understand what I'm saying? He is my father, Matimbe, yeah? He sent me from Africa and from Zimbabwe. I'm happy. He said that, yes, may God be blessed. The brothers are there, must have the, the servant of God. And so it's, it's essential to know that we're instruments, but we have to speak the people of God that God does this. And not by me, not for me, but for others. And for you too, you can say that Lord Jesus Christ, up to today, you hold his word. And that is the same yesterday, today, and forever that we also, we must also enter into the program of God. Uh, it's what? It's the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And then, we have the word. Otherwise, we don't have the word. We are only have the interpretation. In, but we must have the baptism of the Holy Spirit so that we can get the pure of God. Because the Spirit is the Spirit of truth. And you lead us into all the truth. Sanctify them by your word. By your truth. Your word is the truth. May the Lord God bless us and that he can also give you what that's what the Lord has said upon my heart that I can share also with you and so that the time to come the Lord our God can the more use us in a perfect way so that his word also be be clear and precise for the people of God and also for the true action of God because we are coming really to the end of time and we are instruments that god wants to use and so that we know also that <coughs> that we are purified sanctified that pride goes away from us they thought that i didn't know that i'm the only true one but we don't have need of this but know that i am I'm just an instrument that god uses and god uses also my brother and, my, and also my brother so that we must have the spirit of collaboration and also to have respect mutual respect and God uses, we're going to use this one. And also, apostle, not a pastor, a pastor, a pastor, a pastor, an apostle is not a pastor. And so, and so, we must wait for God. If God has made apostles, he knew that I was born with this characteristics. He has made my, 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 my brother also. The commissioners cannot do so in the work of someone else. They will, will do the work that God has assigned us. And each one of us must see that this one is apostles and he can go this. And so, but we respect the ministry that God has done for everyone has his own place and serving God. And so, and so that the Lord also be glorified. May God bless all of you. May God bless you. And so, may God bless us.